Jarko, zdravo momče. Yes, I can hear you loud and clear. Mnogo dobro. Dame i gospodi, dobar den. Hello from Chicago. Thank you. And allow me to greet you and welcome you to the second annual Media Innovation Forum. Now, Jacques tells me that this forum is designed to be the place where one can get the feel for the media market in Macedonia and the region, what is going on, what is planned, trends, innovations, and ideas in the making. I mean, to me, it seems like a wonderful opportunity to network and explore possible opportunities for collaborations, acquisitions, partnerships, and everything in between. I'd like to introduce you to Kirk and Kate, my son Kirk and my assistant Kate. Frankly, it's very boring talking to the camera, so I thought if they are facing me, I can envision all of you, your smiling, engaging faces through them. So thank you, Kate. Thank you, Kirk. And it's wonderful to have you all in my favorite city in the world, my hometown, Skopje. Now, I was really glad to receive this invitation to be with you. Sadly, it was simply not possible this year. But mark my words, I'll find time to be present at future iterations. I strongly support this event as one that really opens up new opportunities and addresses topics related to the development of the country and the region in a more, more broad basis, but also very specifically address media, communications, and innovations. I will come to Macedonia soon to attend the Macedonia 2025 Summit, which hopefully all of you know is November 13th to the 15th, where I know I will see Jacques and his team, and hopefully many of you. At the MK 2025 Summit, Jacques and many others uh, will be speaking on ideas on how to further the progress on our mission of helping build a stronger nation, a stronger, more vibrant, and more prosperous Macedonia. I mean, that's our mission for MK 2025, help build a stronger nation with very uh, intentional emphasis on, number one, accelerating economic development, both support local companies, try to attract foreign investment, stimulate export development, and very importantly, support the growth of entrepreneurs and startup companies. Second, and I would argue very closely related, to implement effective programs that accelerate leadership development, both for executives and big companies, but also to inspire and improve entrepreneurship throughout the country. The Bit of Entrepreneurial Program and the Northwest Kellogg Programs two great examples of this. A third, and arguably this is a big stretch target, but to advocate the ideals of a transparent, democratic, and inclusive society, which is good for the citizens, good for economic development, and of course, good for the country. Now to maintain and to help facilitate discussions, we have a country dashboard, where we hope to ensure broad discussion and progress on the growth and quality of life across the country and what are we heading in the right direction. I know our CEO Nikitsa is there with you. She can provide more context during coffee breaks and of course in coming days, weeks, months and years. Now all of this aligns with my views that a vibrant enterprise entrepreneurial culture and strong business leaders along with well-run values-based businesses of all sizes are a true gift to any society is so critically important in Macedonia. And that is, that, and that is why I was so excited when Jacques, Jacques asked me to attend and to participate in what was supposed to be a wide-ranging, full-hour Q&A session on three topics. Number one, leadership decisions, good practices, lessons learned. Second, my experiences working with agencies, whether it's a consumer or a buyer. And last and most important, my views on innovations in general and on the evolution of media and the communications uh, landscape. <laughs> now, rest assured, I will spare you from watching me on screen for the next 55 minutes. But in the next seven or eight minutes, I'd like to make a few comments on each one of those three items. Of course, with a major emphasis on innovation, media, communications. 
But first, a leadership, a good practice. For me, the most important leadership practice is the ability to conceive, articulate, and then, of course, very important, to follow through on a personal mission statement. Mine is simple, to help develop values-based leaders and organizations. Majority of my time, my working hours, are devoted to mentoring leaders and to building organizations on four core pillars. Without going through too many details, to build organizations with high values, high expectations, real commitment to people development and meritocracy. For you, and to think about this, is a mission statement makes it a great filter, a great litmus test for how one spends their time, but also to help you ass assess your own effectiveness. Once you have a mission statement, I and mean, here's a very simple suggested implementation, tell all the important stakeholders about your mission statement and their related personal objectives. <laughs> Rest assured, the results will speak for themselves but also on a periodic basis, ask the stakeholders how they think you're doing. Results in feedback or the vitamins, like the food for champions. And by the way, if you get all good feedback, rest assured people are not telling you the truth. No one, none of us, has, none of us is that good. Uh, second, ex my experience working with agencies. I will discuss only my first and arguably my favorite experience to date. Background, this was June 2000. I had just joined Motorola after 25 years at General Electric, and I came as the president for a $10 billion mobile phone business. We'd gone to down to eight points market share from 50%, only four years before that. Very low morale. The brand value of Motorola was down significantly. It was mostly engineering, uh, engineering culture, we had many agencies and PR firms. Now, frankly, I had not had much marketing and advertising experience at GE. In such a new, I needed a great partner. We interviewed many firms and many individuals. We chose Shelly Lazarus, the then CEO of Ogilvy Matter. She became a good friend, great confidant, and their relationship continues today. But it was an awesome learning experience that produced just as impressive results. Some of the learnings, the real power of brand, but also the need for total commitment. I used to meet with Shelly on a monthly basis. She also spoke regularly to my whole team and to all 25,000 employees on several occasions. But also the learning that once you make a decision, you have to put money and time behind your words. For us, it was not only marketing, but also design and product innovation. We set very high expectations. How to double the market share the next three years, from 8 to 16%. How to regain the number one spot in US, China, and Latin America. And to move up at least 30 spots in the brand value rankings. So you can see the combination of vision, actions, but also targets. We produced a very exciting motor campaign, but even more exciting, I would argue, is the internal buying and engagement for all employees, marketing, productions, engineering, sales. The results, frankly, were well beyond expectations. When I left Motorola in June 2005, our market share, market share had more than tripled, from 8 to 25%. Brand value is up at 30 points, and our new product and innovations were at very high levels. Let me move on to the main topic, my views on innovation in general, but also the evolution of media and the communications landscape. I mean, I'll start with a given. All of us know this. Growth is an imperative for a healthy business. It's the equivalent of oxygen, water, and sunshine for plants and flowers. Technology and innovation have been a bedrock for growth for many of you in this room. It certainly has been for me. Now, arguably, the change of pace is much higher today than ever before. Now, you can view that as a real threat, put your head in the sand, or as a real opportunity. Media, and frankly, all industries, must integrate new technologies and new innovation in their strategies and how they work. In your industries, it is a world without borders. And for small countries like Macedonia, I would argue, it is a real positive, a real blessing, if you will. 
The consumers are, frankly, global consumers who, by one click, consume news and content from any part of the world. This can bring new ways of monetizing content, new sources of advertising revenues, and new possibilities to reach out to consumers directly and through new innovative methods, new market niches, and opportunities available to all including to you, and this is your very specific chance. Yes, it requires commitment to speed, requires investments in research and in people, and a real commitment to innovation and to new business models. But how would you have it any other way? Of course, this is not easy. It's even more challenging in periods of economic difficulties. But the opportunities are significant. And I've seen so many wonderful examples of innovation and entrepreneurship in the country. I see vigor, youth, energy, passion beyond what I've seen in decades. I am frankly amazed and inspired the progress made in the use of innovations, both in traditional, but as well as the more modern and uh, new digital companies in Macedonia. I've seen firsthand the remarkable examples of such companies we have presented at the prior MK2025 summits. Now, I know it's always a risk of, men uh, of mentioning names and I apologize if I admit number, uh, a number of you, because there's so many, but I'll just mention a few. My app, I am sorry, my air, an app developed by a young Macedonian expert living in Amsterdam, provides real time air pollution data and stats, and we know how much we need that in Skopje. FX3X, the biggest animation studio in the country appearing regularly as one of the studios working with the biggest Hollywood blockbusters. Grouper, <laughs> we all know the story there, and frankly, it was exciting for me to see an entrepreneur moving to the, to the very significant post of Minister of Finance for the country. One on one, this is not only a uh, uh, accolades to, uh, to Jarko for, you know, for, for, for no reasons, but this is a great example, the highest rated talk show in the country, in the longest, 11 years now, running TV project, not owned by TV station. And he's not even 30 yet. And there's so many other examples. The, uh, companies like uh, InPlayer, Embed Social, Brandtech, Adeva, and the list goes on and on. I also see, I also see uh, media businesses, big and small, addressing the changing needs of the consumers in innovative ways. Designing content in a way that combines our strong cultural traditions with a new global mindset. We have a wonderful example, time.mk. This is the country's most visited website and news algorithm that is developed regionally as well. I can talk for a long time, including what we'll be discussing in the summit on the freedom of press, responsible journalism, but let me finish here just with a few suggestions. Number one, I urge you to rethink and reassess your capabilities and your commitment to innovation, both personally and within your company. If you don't like the answer, what will you do about it? Second, network with purpose. Look for people that can help you and people that can be your mentor. I would also suggest to you that equally valuable and possibly more valuable, be receptive to help others and to mentor others. I have found mentoring others has been just as beneficial to me as the great mentors I have had throughout my life. Three, be open to new ideas. And four and last, leave this forum with an updated mission statement for you and if applicable for your company. I wish I was there, but I wish you all an inspiring, informative, and successful media innovation forum. Hope to see you soon. Novo posto de referência, do Cleide.